This experience happened while I was hiking through Yellowstone National Park, something I've done every year for the past 11 years since moving out to Colorado. I love the peace and quiet of being in nature, and this place was my favorite summer trip. This time was different, though. I had an experience that I'm still not sure what really happened. It was August of 2018, and I was hiking by myself. I had just finished up a long day on the trail and was heading back to my campsite. The return was taking me through a dense forest when I suddenly felt this strange sensation of energy, like an electric current or something. The best way to describe it is that the air felt heavy, like it was hard to move. I paused for a bit, but eventually continued walking even though it became harder and harder to move my legs, one in front of the other. I struggled along a few feet more until I then felt something grab onto me from behind. Now it felt like someone had their hands around my waist and was trying to pull me backwards. The sheer force of it was so strong that I couldn't move or break away. I tried to wiggle my body away and scream, but nothing worked. I was paralyzed with fear. I tried to swing my body around to see who or what it was, but I still couldn't move. I was able to swing my head back though, but was shocked to see that nothing was there. And then in a blink of an eye, I was moving, but not under my own power. It felt like I was being pulled through the air. The sensation was so strange and disorienting that I lost all sense of up and down. I could see the forest around me whizzing by, but it all happened so fast. And in the next instant, I was released, and I fell to the ground. I laid there for a few moments trying to catch my breath and make sense of what had just happened. When I finally sat up, I looked around and saw that I was in a completely different part of the forest. I must have been transported at an incredibly high speed because there was no way I could have walked to this spot in the short time I had been hiking. I got up and tried to orient myself, but I quickly realized that I had no idea where I was. I couldn't find any landmarks that looked familiar, and my phone had no service. I was completely lost. I wandered around a bit trying to find something, anything that I could recognize, but it soon became too dark and I gave up. I ended up spending that night in the forest, making a bed of leaves and leaning some sticks up against a big rock to make a makeshift shelter. As soon as the sun started to rise, I was up and followed the direction of the sunrise to get myself oriented. During my search for my campsite, I couldn't think of anything else but getting myself back. It was all I could concentrate on. I didn't even have the energy at that point to spend on being scared. Later, though, I would think about how I was probably one of the lucky ones. One of the ones who got away. Someone who broke free from an energy field. And I don't even know how I did it or what it was. Eventually, I finally found my way back to my campsite and was able to sit down and think about what had happened. But there was nothing I could come up with that made any sense. The experience didn't match anything I had ever heard or read about. Was I abducted by aliens? Pulled through some kind of portal? Or did I just imagine the whole thing? I guess I'll never really know. However, it really makes me think that there are things out there that we can't explain. Things beyond our understanding. And that's pretty amazing to me that things like that exist. I still like to hike, but I haven't been back to Yellowstone since that day. Maybe one day I'll go back and see if I can find that spot again and put some closure to the experience. But for now, I'm content to just remember the experience and try to make whatever sense of it I can. I was working as a park ranger in Redwood National Park in Northern California when this happened on a beautiful sunny day in May of 2017. The park was not very busy that day, and there were only about a dozen people at the visitor center when this family came walking in with their young son, they told me that they had just seen this strange creature while walking the Ladybird Johnson Grove Trail 
and they were scared enough that they wanted to report it. I asked them what it was, and the father said he didn't know, but it looked like a big dog or a wolf, and it ran from him faster than he'd ever seen anything move and then disappeared into the trees. I thought, okay, maybe someone's pet got loose or something. So I made a call out to see if anyone had reported a missing animal of any kind recently. No one had, so I told this man that we'd keep an eye out for it if he wanted to leave his name and number to get any updates. He did, and then left with his family. I watched them get in their car and drive off. I'm not sure where they were headed, but I really didn't expect to have to talk to them again. And then about ten minutes later, another man came in and said he had just seen a big black bear walking strangely, and he described having seen it in the same area as the first family. I asked him if he was sure that it was a bear because someone else had reported seeing something strange there earlier. He said yes, it looked like a bear, but he said it was weird because it ran on two legs instead of four. So I told him what the first guy had seen and asked him if it was similar to that. He described exactly what the first family had seen except that he said the animal was a bear versus a dog or a wolf. He said the animal was all black with no other colors, no white around the eyes or the muzzle. However, this guy also said it looked like it had been burned or something weird because its fur was singed around the edges. I thanked him for the information, and he left. So now I had two reports of something really strange in basically the same area, and I was starting to get a little worried. I decided to head over and check it out myself. I headed out to the Ladybird Johnson Trail and didn't see anything when I first got there. But after wandering around a bit and looking for anything out of place, I heard something in the bushes. I slowly approached... And whatever it was must have heard me coming because it ran out of the bushes and took off into the woods, but not before I got a good look at it. It was this big, black, hairy creature that to me did look like a cross between a dog and a wolf and a bear. It also had singed fur around its face and body, and it was definitely not acting like any animal I had ever seen because it was running on two legs instead of four just like that guy said. I called out to it a few times, but it just kept running until it was out of sight, and I knew instantly that this was the thing that the others had seen. I followed it for a while and then lost sight of it. I couldn't believe what I'd just seen, and I had no idea what to do next. I didn't know if anyone would take seriously my description of the thing, but I did go back to the visitor center and report what I had seen. Needless to say, we closed the area down until we could figure out what was going on. Thank goodness they at least believed me that much, to at least check things out and keep the place safe. Rangers were sent to the area to try and find the creature, but after a full day of searching, they never found anything. We eventually reopened the area to the public, but we were never able to figure out what that thing was that people saw that day. It remains one of the strangest things that has ever happened to me in all my years as a park ranger. This story takes place in Shelby County, Tennessee, in August of 2019. My friends and I weren't planning on doing any hiking. We just wanted to get out and enjoy nature and maybe drink some beer away from where anyone would catch us. It was August and the weekend before college started back up again, so many of our other friends were busy or already gone. We were just driving around, hanging out, and decided to go for a short hike in Meme and Shelby Forest. We figured it would be fun to just wander in the woods, so we parked our car in a small gravel lot and found a trailhead and headed off. We had no real destination, we were just wandering for the fun of it. After wandering a bit, we came to an open clearing and decided that we wanted to just hang out there for a while. We weren't hikers after all and didn't even have proper shoes or anything on. Jennifer even had on flip-flops. We plopped ourselves down on some downed trees and just sat there drinking and laughing and talking. 
Honestly, we had no sense of time at that point, and before we knew it, the sun started setting. I don't even think any of us noticed it was happening at first, but once the darkness really started to set in, we all snapped to a bit. We realized we were in the woods without flashlights and could now barely see ten feet in front of us. So after trying to make ourselves feel okay by laughing about how ridiculous this was and how stupid we had been, Jennifer pulls out her phone out of her pocket and turns on the flashlight. After some fidgeting, she gets it to work perfectly and turns around shining the light directly in all of our faces. We winced, blinking as she shone it around in all of our eyes. You idiots! Just turn on your flashlights on your phones! She was still a bit drunk and acting like she was the only one who knew how to do anything. But the next sound out of her mouth was a loud shriek as her phone light stopped shining on us and illuminated an area off to the side. We all turned in the direction of the light, and that's when we saw it. It was just behind the first tree off to our left. It was huge and dog-like in its appearance and features, but human-like in shape. It had long arms and basically human hands, although they were completely covered in fur. And speaking of fur, its fur seemed like it glistened, like it was wet or something. But I'm not sure about that. I could have been totally confused because of how dark it was at this point and how much beer I had had. Despite the darkness, for some reason I do remember realizing for an absolute fact that it had eyes that literally glowed in the dark. Amber-colored eyes that had an intelligence about them. Like when you look into the eyes of an ape and you feel like you're looking at a human, it was that kind of feeling. I instantly knew we had come across a dogman. The dogman stood rooted, staring at us for a long time, just watching us, probably to see what we would do. And then without warning, it let out a blood-curdling scream before taking a slow step towards us. The dogman's head was scraping against the branches above it, which just didn't seem possible to me. I mean, they were really high up there. And that scream that it made surely echoed far through the woods. I also remember thinking I could only hope that somebody else had heard it and was hopefully maybe calling the police. We were frozen in place despite the fact that it was coming at us. And it stunk. But then Jennifer screamed again and it took us from our trances. We all ran as fast as we could back towards our original direction. We were all stumbling over each other, not being able to see properly, not having good trail shoes. It's honestly a wonder that we're all still alive to talk about this encounter. Anyway, we kept fumbling around and didn't stop running until we came to a crossroads in the trail. We had no idea which way to go from there. We were all just basically running on adrenaline at this point and not thinking at all, just reacting and yelling at each other. I was the furthest behind in the group, and just as I could see them all pausing at the crossroads, I heard a branch snap behind me. I screamed, which made them react and scatter. All three of them went running off into different directions. I don't know if they were consciously thinking to split us all up somehow or not, but at that point I'm not really sure any of us knew what to do besides get away. I took a deep breath trying to decide which group to follow, and that's when I heard the dogman scream again, so loudly that it sounded like it was right behind me. I swung my head back and realized that the dogman had pretty much been on top of me the whole time, but only made a sound just then. It glared back at me and hissed and growled and stomped its feet. Thank God I had enough wits about me to start running. I'm not sure how far I ran or for how long, but that thing kept up with me, hissing and growling the entire time. It seemed like it took hours before it stopped chasing me, and I honestly don't remember exactly when it did. At one point, it just wasn't there anymore. Obviously, it could have caught me at any time, but I have no idea why it didn't. Did it just lose interest, or was it toying with me? I wandered around for a long time after that and eventually came across my friends again. Jennifer started sobbing as soon as she saw me and said she was scared to death that I had been the dog man's next meal. I told her I couldn't begin to imagine what she had been through, too. The whole thing was just so surreal. 
we had all definitely just had the scariest experiences of our lives. After a while, we all calmed down and made it back to the car. We talked about it and agreed to not mention the incident with each other or with anyone else ever again. After all, nobody would have believed us anyway. We all promised that we'd say nothing about it and pretend like it just never happened. We all went back to our homes and our lives, and we still see each other from time to time, but we never discuss what happened. And that was nearly a year ago, and none of us have ever even mentioned hiking or going into the woods again. I keep having nightmares, though, and I really think I'm going to reach out to Jennifer to see how she's feeling. I don't think she'll mind me mentioning it, but for now I just needed to get this off of my chest, and that's why I'm writing in to you. When I look back on it, I really don't think the dog man was trying to actually catch us, though. For some reason, I just feel like it was making sounds to frighten us away from something. Maybe it was protecting its young or keeping us away from its territory. Who knows? We'll probably never know. The bottom line is that I'm not sure what the dog man is protecting out there, but I know I'm never going out there to find out. I honestly don't know if I ever even want to go hiking again at all. <laughs> 